Good morning, Central. Thank you for joining here together with me and with each other as we look at a few words from God's Word and say good morning to Him and to each other to help get our day off to a good start. Just in case you have had any challenges to deal with lately, and just in case God has given you any comfort in the midst of those challenges, I want to read some words that we can relate that to from the opening of 2 Corinthians, the second letter that Paul wrote to the church of Corinth. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of comfort, compassion, and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. Paul is faced with a lot of troubles and suffering. In fact, he makes a list of those things that he had gone through in his life in chapter 11 of 2 Corinthians, if you really want to get a feel for it. Paul needed some comfort, and God gave it to him. And the result of that was that Paul was able then to pass that comfort along to others who needed it. Paul opened this letter with words of praise to God. He could have just detailed how rough his life had been, but instead he wrote words of praise to God. That's just the right thing to do. I know it is because that's the situation that Paul was in, and the words that he wrote were inspired by the Holy Spirit. That's the right thing to do. But do real people really do that? I recently learned about the story of Martin Rinkert, a Lutheran minister. At age 31, he came back to his hometown of Eilenburg in the year 1617, right before the outbreak of the Thirty Years' War. The Austrians and the Swedes ravaged the German countryside for those 30 years. About 20% of the German population died, more than 8 million people. Refugees crowded into Eilenburg. Soldiers quartered in Rinkert's home. Then there was a big plague, and then after that, a famine that broke out. The other remaining ministers of the town died or left, and Martin was the only one left to carry on as a minister to that city. He conducted close to 5,000 funerals. In 1637, one of the 8,000 people he helped bury that year was his wife. The stories I read about what happened in Eilenburg during those years are just horrid beyond imagination. Worn down physically, Martin lived to see the end of the Thirty Years' War, but he died just a year after it was over. And still in the midst of all that suffering, he managed to leave behind one of the most loved hymns of Germany. Nun dunket alle gut. Now thank we all our God. Martin Rinkert was faced with troubles and suffering. He needed comfort and Somewhere along the way, God gave that to him. The words that he chose to write were words of praise to God, originally written as a table grace for his children. And then later, those words set to music were used as a national hymn to celebrate the end of the Thirty Years' War. Now thank we all our God with heart and hands and voices who wondrous things hath done, in whom his world rejoices. It continues to praise in the second verse, O oh, may this bounteous God through all our life be near us, with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer us, and keep us in his grace and guide us when perplexed, and free us from all ills in this world and the next. The third verse is simply more words of praise to God. When I read 2 Corinthians, the introduction, I'm reminded how Paul's inspired words help us to acknowledge that it is right 
to offer praise in the midst of hard times. And I think that Rinkert's words help us to acknowledge that it is possible to offer praise to God in the midst of hard times. Times that most of us, thankfully, can't even imagine. I hope that today you'll find comfort from God. I hope you'll find a way to comfort others with the comfort that you yourself receive from him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for words of encouragement. Thank you for uh, the lives of people who before us have shown what it is like to live a life of gratitude and dependence on you, to be able to utter words of praise, even in the midst of the hardest of sufferings. Father, I pray that our lives, should we have to endure such difficulties or even minor things, that they'll be a reflection of that kind of a conviction, that you are the great giver of all comfort, that we ourselves receive comfort so that we can pass that on to others who need to be comforted. Help us to think of someone like that today, Lord, and to apply just what we have looked at in your word to help someone else know what it's like to issue praise even in the midst of difficulty. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, if someone has comforted you, if God has given you comfort in some fashion, will you find someone else who needs that and pass it along to them? If you have found a help from these morning times together, would you please post that on your timeline on Facebook? Share it with somebody who will also benefit from it. And Lord willing, we'll be back here again tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock to say good morning Central. Thanks. God bless you. Have a great day.